Thanks for listening to the 39th Street Church of Christ Daily Devotional. The devotional today is The Certainty of Receiving the Crown of Life by Greg Rokos. If you want to turn your Bibles, we're going to look at uh, three verses tonight. We'll start at 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're look, going to look at uh, verses 6, 7, and 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6, 7, and 8. We'll start by reading in verse 6. It says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. So what is Paul writing us? He knows that he's not departing to go somewhere else or do something else. His departure is meaning his death. He is going to die, and he knows this. Now, we don't know how he knows this. It's not told to us if it's divine in nature that is explained to him that this is about to happen, or if it's the Romans telling him, tomorrow's the day. Look, we've built this thing, and Tomorrow we're executing you. So we don't know how he knows this, but he knows that his time of departure is at hand. And so in verse 8, it says, Henceforth there is uh, laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And so he knows that on that day, the day that's coming, the day of his departure, what will happen? He's going to receive that crown of righteousness. And he's looking forward to that. He knows that he's going to have that crown of righteousness. Now you may ask yourself, how does he know that? What is giving him this information that he's doing it? Now I know a lot of you may think, well, we read back in Acts that he heard the word, he believed, repented, confessed, and was baptized, right? Is this the reason that he knows? Well, let's go back to verse 7. Verse 7 explains even further in depth how he knows he's going to receive that crown of righteousness. It says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So he lists three things here. That he fought the fight, he finished his course, and he continued in faith. So what? He kept the faith. So what do these three things mean? Now, I wrote a much longer lesson that goes into depth of all these three things, what they mean. But then I remember sitting in an elders deacons meeting when the elders told us to try to keep Wednesday night lessons short. And so I'm going to try to keep it very short. So what does it mean? He fought a good fight. So what does that mean? Was he a boxer, MMA, doing some sort of boxing in that realm? No, you need to think of the word fight here as being more of a courtroom battle. He, he fought the word. He tried to teach, and he fought with people verbally to try to teach them what was going on. What did the uh, gospel have to tell them? So this is the type of fight that he had. What about finishing his course? There are many people here that are in high school over here, or maybe in lower grades. What is their course? Their course is to try to graduate from high school or try to graduate from college. Then one after that, they, people take the course to get a job, to move up, try to become maybe the president of their company or something like that. They have a course. But what is the Christian course? The Christian course may be for some of us to try to become an elder, maybe become, become a deacon, maybe a Bible class teacher. Maybe someone who does personal studies. Maybe it's a missionary. Maybe it's someone who could be an elder's wife, a deacon's wife. Maybe it's other things that you could do inside the church. But there's a course you have to take, and you have to, you have to finish that course. Just saying that someday I'd like to be an elder, someday I'd like to be a Bible class teacher, is not finishing that course. You actually have to go through and take the steps and achieve and do it. And the last thing it says is, I have kept the faith. Now, a lot of people will turn and say, well, faith, that's found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. But I don't think that's the faith he's really talking about here. He kept the faith. What does that mean? Well, this summer, Jennifer and I are going to be married 24 years. And part of that is being faithful to each other. Some of you may have boyfriends and girlfriends here or other relationships, and you're faithful to that relationship. What was Paul? Since the time he was baptized, he was faithful to Christ in what he was doing. And that's part of what we always say. After you're baptized, you have to live faithfully. Live faithfully and carry out your, uh, your role in the church and being a Christian. And so these are the three things he talks about. That, that's how he received the crown of righteousness. Now, one of the things that we always try to do, and I appreciate when Jack preaches, he always talks about making it personal. So when you read verse 6, it says, For I... And insert your name after it. For I, Greg, am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. 
Well, hopefully it's not at hand here today, but someday it will be. Have I fought the good fight? Have I gone out and preached and taught the word of God? Have I finished my course? Have I done the things that I'm supposed to do? The talents and abilities I have, I, that I have, have I used them to the best of my ability? Have I kept the faith? Have I been faithful to Christ and the Bible and the teachings that have been given to me? Because if I have, henceforth there is a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day. Now it was written to Paul, but that next part of this verse is you and me. It says, I'm going to put my glasses on to read it. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And that's us. So he personalized it in that what he wrote back then is still what applies to us today. So if we're out there and we're keeping up the fight, we're finishing our course, and we're being faithful, keeping the faith, then there is a crown of righteousness for us. So as we go through the rest of the week, I hope you can take these thoughts. When things happen, when things are going on around you, you remember these things. Keep, keep these th three things in mind as we live our lives. Thank you for taking the time to watch this short devotional. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be notified of other devotionals that will be forthcoming. Also, we encourage you to join us online live as we stream our services at each service time. More information can be found on our website at the link below. Thank you.